When most people think of war heroes, they don't think of ones that nay. And yet, not only was a horse promoted to the rank of sergeant, she was awarded commendations, unit citations, and the Purple Heart. In society's imagination, war horses went out of fashion with the First World War, the first modern war that killed off cavalry units with machine gun fire. However, 40 years later, the U.S. Army was using horses to carry ammunition and six-feet-long recoilless guns across battlefields. A Lieutenant Penderson was partly responsible for this when he searched for an alternative to the soldiers hauling guns themselves, as trucks could not make the climb through steep mountain passes. As the story goes, he came across a stable boy from the racetrack in Seoul, and the boy's sister had stepped on a landmine and lost her leg but the family couldn't afford a prosthetic. The boy offered Pedersen a horse he owned and was training to race. The horse was named Morning Flame or Flame of the Morning, depending on the translation you go with. But within a few years after Pedersen purchased her, she gained a more famous moniker. Sergeant Reckless, as she became known, was a Mongolian mare purchased by the Marines in 1952 for $250, and became the official war horse of the recoilless rifle platoon anti-tank company 5th Marines. Initially, she was named Reckless only because it was the unit's radio call sign. She quickly became part of the unit and was allowed to freely roam through the camp entering Marine's tents where she would sleep on cold nights and became known for her willingness to eat nearly anything, including scrambled eggs, beer, Coca-Cola, and once about $30 worth of poker chips. Though she wasn't actually a sergeant, after two years of service, the commander of the 1st Marine Division was so impressed and grateful to the horse that he gave her an official battlefield promotion to the rank of sergeant, her fellow soldiers took the rank serious enough to threaten others with court-martial for disrespecting her rank. There was even a standing order that no soldier was allowed to ride her, not only out of respect for her rank, but also because she was too valuable an asset to risk injuring. Sergeant Reckless served in many battles during the Korean War. Her role and responsibilities grew beyond just hauling the heavy recoilless rifle. Soon, she carried supplies and ammunition to dangerous outposts and carried wounded soldiers from the battlefield while under fire. The highlight of her nine-month military career came in March 1953 during the Battle for Outpost Vegas. In a battle that saw over a thousand American soldiers and twice as many Chinese soldiers killed in three days of fighting, Sergeant Reckless made over 50 trips across rice paddies and up steep mountain trails to the front lines and back in one day. At first, she made the trek with a Marine leading her, but after casualties grew so great that the Marines couldn't spare any extra hands, she made the trips on her own without any Marine, save for the occasional wounded one laid across her back. She was wounded twice, hit both with shrapnel above her left eye and in her left flank. Yet she continued to make the trip back and forth while under fire and without any urging or direction by a human being. In response, a reporter from the Saturday Evening Post wrote about her, and the public grew to love the horse. In fact, Life magazine recognized her as one of America's 100 all-time heroes. Ed Sullivan had wanted her to appear on his show and was willing to pay the costs to get her there, but she never did appear on the show. At the conclusion of the war, Reckless's fans in America lobbied to bring her back to the United States. An executive at Pacific Transport Lines, even, was so moved by the story that he offered to transport her to San Francisco on one of his ships for free. For her exemplary service to the Marine Corps, Reckless was awarded two Purple Hearts for the wounds received during the Battle of Vegas, a Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, a Presidential Unit Citation with Bronze Star, the National Defense Service Medal, a Korean Service Medal, the United Nations Korea Medal, a Navy Unit Commendation, and a Republic of Korea Presidential Unit Citation. She would wear these awards on her horse blanket, plus a French medal that the 5th Marines earned in World War I. After the war, she was indeed transported to California, though not without trouble. The Customs Bureau was not much of a problem, but the United States Department of Agriculture insisted a medical check and lab test be completed before she disembarked from the ship once it reached San Francisco. 
which made her late for the Marine banquet where she was to be the guest of honor. The Marines ended up contacting agriculture department officials in Washington, D.C., who agreed to allow her off the ship after her blood was drawn for lab tests, with the understanding that if she had glanders or Doreen, she would be killed or sent back to Asia. Many of the Marines who actually knew her from her service were incensed at what they considered an affront to her honor when they learned that Doreen was an equine sexually transmitted disease. But she had no diseases and was allowed ashore in November 1954. In the end, she lived at Camp Pendleton until her death in 1968 from falling into a barbed wire fence. She was then buried with full military honors. Since her death, two statues of her were erected. One is at the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia. The other is at Camp Pendleton. In 2018, the U.S. Congress passed a bill to promote Reckless to the rank of Staff Sergeant. You might also have come across a Lieutenant Peanut Butter in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, a character inspired by Reckless. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and hit the bell notification to keep up with the latest videos. Leave a comment or a like if you want. There's always more history.